Alright guys, I'm out here today. I'm finally going to show you how I rigged up the brakes on my off-road lawnmower. You guys have seen me test these things out quite a few times already. I've done it in a few of my past videos. I've basically taken the whole thing on a couple of romps, dunking it in the mud, driving it through sticks, grass, everything you can imagine, testing them out to see how they work. And I'm happy to say they've performed great. And a lot of you guys have been asking me about these and how they're rigged up. And the basic idea is you've got your shifter here. This is uh, this could work for one of these side shift models here really easily. And I've basically taken your standard shift rod and I sleeved it with a larger diameter piece of tube steel. This is the same diameter tube steel that you would find on bicycle handlebars. And I made a T handle out of this, welded it together. And the reason I did that is so I could add this hand brake system. And this is a regular handbrake for a BMX bike, a mountain bike, whatever. Now the other kind of important thing to note about this system is the fact that it does have the ability to shift full range from reverse to fifth gear and not bind up. And that is because I have what is called a noodle, like a cable noodle or something like that. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's what they're called. You can find them on eBay. They're typically for mountain bikes. Um, but what it basically allows you to do is make hard angles with this wire without having a lot of binding in the handle because if you take this conduit and bend it around real hard, this plastic shit, uh, it won't be as easy to pull as it would be if you had these noodles on here. But basically from here out, you've just got the standard bicycle uh, conduit and you can pick this stuff up at any mountain bike store. Uh, you can buy it by the foot. It's really nice to get new pieces because they cut the ends off for you and it makes it really easy to deal with. Um, but it's just zip tied here to my battery retaining mechanism box bullshit. Uh, I drilled some more holes here in the firewall, I guess you could call this, or the center console of my mower. Put a zip tie there to hold it forward. The conduit continues down. You can see it kind of just makes a big loop. And that's because it's going down towards the rear transaxle. And what I had to do here was drill a big ass hole through my big rear fender of my tractor here. And I put a piece of rubber hose into the big ass hole and then ran my plastic conduit through the center of the rubber hose. Here on the inside, on the bottom side I should say, you can see where the conduit comes out and the rubber hose, you can see that right there. And the reason I did the rubber hose is because this is coming through sharp pieces of metal, this conduit. So I don't want this to get chafed to shit. So there's a lot of vibration driving off road. So just slide a little small piece of uh, one inch long rubber hose in there and run your wire through it so you don't ruin things. But you can see uh, wiggling it around there, it's pretty free playing. Uh, I haven't had any problems with this catching any sticks, weeds, logs, anything like that. It's been great. This whole setup has worked pretty much flawlessly since day one. Uh, it comes down here into what is basically my transmission support. I have one on each side and this one I basically utilized. I took a piece of angle steel, get a better look at it maybe from up here, but you can see how it was a piece of angle steel here, and it came across and out, and I basically chopped one side of the angle steel off, drilled a hole through it, and ran one of these conduit retainers. This is like an adjustable one, it's got threads, and I got a bolt on this side so I can adjust even more slack out of here if I want to, and that basically runs to what is called a wire stop. And you can get basically all of these parts except for the noodle, on BMI Cart's website. Um, you can probably get them other places as well, but I know you can get them there. So I'll leave part numbers in the description for the wire stop. And for this guy here, um, it's pretty pretty easy. The wire stop is pretty important because uh, it's basically what holds the wire to your, your, uh, your brake lever, if you want to call it that. And it's actually, I welded mine to my brake lever because I couldn't figure out another way to attach it. And what a wire stop basically is, you can look them up, uh, it's like a nut with a hole drilled through the side of it and your wire goes through the side of the nut and then this screw basically threads down into the nut trapping the wire inside. You tighten that son of a bitch down as hard as you can and it's not going anywhere. Here I'll give it a couple squeezes for you. You can see as I'm squeezing it here the action translates down here. Like I said, you can bind on these brakes really hard and that wire stop will not let the wire out. The other key ingredient here is having the spring. And this spring needs to be constantly, constantly loaded. Basically meaning you don't want 
to let your brakes off and have this be able to flop around even the slightest bit because if it does, your brakes are going to be moving and tweaking around. The other thing you want to make sure before you hook this all up is to jack your rear end up on your lawnmower, spin your rear tires and find the sweet spot with this brake lever because if you push it too far back, the brakes are going to rub. If you push it too far forward, the brakes are going to rub. There's a sweet spot right in the middle and you can almost see it based on this little groove that's cut out down here. There's a little pin in here. If you guys know how these transaxle brakes work, it's kind of funny. It's like a cam and a lobe. This thing, as it moves back and forth, this slanted piece of metal drives the pin in and puts pressure onto the brake pad, which puts pressure onto the brake rotor. It's kind of a weird setup, but it works fairly well for riding lawn mowers. Not so much for racing lawn mowers. Anything high speed, this is just bullshit. But like I said, find the sweet spot with your brake lever. Make sure your spring is constantly loaded so it's always pulling on the brake lever because you don't want your spring coming undone or anything. Try to keep your spring set up really simple because uh, it's this whole shit, everything here is going to get caked in mud. And it will still work if it gets caked in mud. You can get shit packed right in here and this whole system will still work. It won't work as well. It won't be able to lock the tires up, but it will slow you down. So it is better than nothing. Like I said, I've been testing this setup for a month uh, or maybe two now and they've been working great. I plan on keeping them in place and once they wear out, I'll probably replace the pads and keep running them because uh, some brakes are better than no brakes. But you should be able to throw these together real quick. It's real simple. I really like having the brake handle on the shifter because my hand is pretty much sitting on the shifter all the time anyways. So it just makes sense to, you know, have the brake handle there because you can use it or not use it. And it, it just, it, it feels natural. It really does. It's like riding a bicycle. The other thing is you don't want your brake attached to a pedal because uh, if you're like me, you know, your foot bounces around. I can barely keep my foot on the gas pedal half the time. So I don't want to have to rely on my foot being able to hold the brake pedal down to the floor to, to stop me because uh, I have a lot better control with my hands than my feet. And also you don't want your brakes to be activated with your clutch because if that's the case, then every time you go to shift and push your clutch and you're going to lock up the rear tires and eventually probably blow your transmission or something along those lines, just wear the brakes out immediately. So that's really not a good idea either. That's pretty much why I separated the clutch and brakes. But that's it for this video, you guys. Let me know what you think. I hope you liked the video. Um, very simple setup. Give it a try. It'll take you an hour or two to put it together. You'll be using it for the rest of the tractor's life. You won't want to not have it. So uh, that's it. Let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you guys later.